hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, what do you do with a dead cicada? What a bizarre way to start a show. But it's true. I found a dead cicada bug in my yard and in my area they are one of the ugliest but one of the coolest looking bugs around and I got to thinking what can I do with this can I preserve it um, so that's what we are going to do today so let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what I've got so far well what I started off with is a piece of two inch uh, diameter plastic tubing and truth be told what this is actually is some leftover scraps from the vacuum hoses that I have around the shop here so I just cut a little section off of it and I ended up pouring this cicada into the plastic tube and I don't know if you can see that but it's got this really cool magnification thing now what happened here, and I don't really understand the physics of it, um, but basically what happened was the tail blew off in the mold. I guess maybe there was moisture in there or what have you, and the pressure from the pressure pot caused his butt to blow off. Uh, either that or he's been eating some seriously uh, bad food. But regardless of what he ate, we have this really cool pouring and the resin that I used, well, it's getting old and it's yellowed a bit. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm okay with that. I like the tinge of it and it was the last of the batch anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this away from the mold and then I need to take a hacksaw and in the bottom here, I'm going to cut a little slit just to be able to separate our cicada tube out of our uh, mold here. And now we have something like this. Um, but it's not perfect. It still has the marks of the plastic. It is not uniform by any means. Uh, so we're going to clean that up and we're going to do that at the lathe. So what I've done is I've drilled a three quarter inch diameter Forstner bit hole in the one end and I'm going to install this expanding collet. Um, there's been some questions on these collets before on other shows where guys didn't really understand the process or the concept of what I did to chuck it up. So that's why I'm showing this. So we have this three quarter inch hole. I have a three quarter inch collet. You place it in the end, bottom it out, and once you get that, then you're going to take an Allen key and you will tighten this down. Just like that. Now it's secure in there and we can take it over to the lathe. Now over here at the lathe, I have the other half of the expanding collet um, set up and that is the chuck for this. So I have a half inch collet here to set up in the chuck. Just snap it in place and then we'll put this back together. And all we're going to do is screw this onto our headstock. And once we get it securely on there, we can take our expanding collet that goes into our headstock here. And once you get it somewhat secure, you can use the wrenches that it comes with and finish tightening it down. So now I'm going to take a three quarter inch roughing gouge and I'm going to turn this so that it's cylindrical and perfectly uh, flat and smooth.
and with that I've got it all evened out the way that I want it. I've also taken out the saw marks that I left uh, with our hacksaw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the vacuum over here. I'm going to get rid of all of these shavings and clean this area up. We're going to get some dust collection over here and then we're going to start sanding our turning and we're going to start it at 80 grit. Now this sanding with 80 grit is quite possibly, well in my opinion anyway, the most important sanding process in all of this. Um, this is the one that is going to guarantee whether or not you get a nice clear shine and a nice clear turning here. I've shown you guys this before on the show, but I want to show you again just a little trick so that you can tell how you're going here with your sanding. So I'm going to zoom in and show you something here. So once you think you're finished turning with the 80 grit sandpaper, you want to clean the sanding with alcohol. Uh, this will take out a lot of the sanding dust that's in it and give you a rough idea of how you're doing with it. But there's one more trick here I'm gonna show you and then we can carry on. So once you get it nice and clean, that all of our sanding dust from the resin is out of it, you want to get a piece of 220 grit sandpaper. And what you're going to want to do is sand the opposite direction of what you were sanding just now with the 60 grit, or sorry, with the 80 grit. And you will just rough it up all the way along. And then when you're done, you want to have a look at your turning and you will be able to see distinct areas that need fixing. I see a gouge line right here. I see a couple more over here. So these areas will really stick out when you go in the opposite direction of uh, what you were sanding. So I don't think we need a super long video of me sanding. So I'm gonna go through the grits here. I'm gonna finish up with the 80. I'm gonna move on to 120, 150, 220, and then for the dry sanding, I'm going to finish it off with 320 and then 400. And we'll just clean this up. And at this point, you should have something that looks like this. Now it's still not very clear and that's because we're not even close to being done, but it'll give you an idea of what you're looking at after the last dry sanding. You can still see that it is quite hazy and that is the way it will look. But as long as it's nice and smooth, you're well on your way to getting a great finish. So now comes the time for wet sanding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the same grit that I just finished up with and that will be 400. I will sand it wet and then once I get that done I'm going to move up to 600 and then I'll talk more about it afterwards when I get that done. Well at this point I am done the sanding up to 600 wet and it's still hazy and I know it's going to be but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start hitting it with micro abrasives. And you've seen me use these pads before on the show. Uh, they're great for putting a super high finish on CA, but it's a wet sanding pad and they run from grits of 1500 right up to 12,000. Again, we don't need a video of me wet sanding for an hour, so I'm going to go through, sand through all these grits, and I'll see you when I've got this done. And there we have our cicada inside our resin. Now it's not as clear of a turning as I would like, and it's no fault of the polishing, it's because my resin is old and yellowed. But doesn't matter, it's still a pretty cool effect. So now that I have this done, we're going to take this off the lathe 
and I'm going to, well, we're going to see what kind of scrap we have in the wood rack. Well, I took our cicada over to the bandsaw and just trimmed off our edges just to shrink it up a little bit. Now what I've got is a couple scraps of half inch thick walnut. I found them in the rack and what I'm going to do to start this off is I'm going to mark my center and then I'm going to drill a one inch Forstner bit hole and it doesn't have to be very deep but in my case I'm going to drill it so that it is just a little more than one eighth of an inch deep. And with those two done, I will now finish it off with a half inch diameter through hole in each one of these pieces. And now using the same expanding collets that we did before, we're going to install this in our half inch hole, tighten it up so that it's nice and secure in there, and we're going to chuck this up in the lathe. And what we want to do once we get that chucked up is we want to measure our cicada edges here to see what the diameter is. Once we get the diameter, I'm going to use a parting tool and just turn a recess in here that is the same diameter as our resin um, and the same depth as what we drilled our one inch hole here. So what was the purpose of drilling the one inch hole? Well, for starters, it gives us a depth to aim for, and as well, it clears us of our expanding collet so that we're not hitting this collet with our chisels and damaging it. So I'm going to take this over and, uh, well, cut our recess on the lathe. And there is our first recess rough turned. So I'm going to do the same thing with our second one, and I'll see you when I get that done. Well, I have the second recess cut, and what I'm going to do now is I've marked roughly a two and a half inch circle on these blanks. I'm gonna cut this roughly just outside the line on the scroll saw, and I'm going to, uh, once we're done that, take it over to the lathe. We're gonna chuck them back up again and turn them to a two and a half inch disc. Now, because of the way that I've done my recesses here, I can put my two pieces back to back, put my expanding collet through both pieces and chuck them up at the exact same time. That way both turnings are identical. So let's get these over to the lathe and uh, see what we can turn. And with them turned to a rough dimension, I've taken one off and I'm just going to round the edges just to smooth it up a bit. And then I'm going to give it a good sanding. I'm going to do that for both and then I'll see you when I get that done. Well, I've cut some half inch plugs out of some scraps of ebony that I had up in the rack and I'm just going to glue them into place and it will provide two purposes for me. Uh, one is it's going to close that half inch hole and the other one is it gives a contrast between the pieces of sapwood walnut that I have here and uh, the center hole which will be that black black ebony. So we're just going to get the glue applied all the way around to the plug put it in place. We're going to tap that in there and then clean up our squeeze out. And once those are set, we can cut off our ebony plugs with a flush cut saw. And then we'll give each one a good sanding. And at this point, I'm just going to give each one of these pieces a coating of Danish oil, and that will really bring out that contrast there for the ebony against the walnut. 
Well, the next thing we're going to do is glue our ends onto our cicada turning. So I'm just going to apply a little bit. In this case, I'm using Gorilla Glue Clear. And we're just going to apply a little bit there. And then we're going to wet the one surface. Just like that. And then we will plunk our cap down on there. And then we'll turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. Once we get that done, we'll clamp it all down and we're gonna leave this overnight. Well, it's the next day and we're all dried up and the project is almost finished. There's just one thing that I want to do to it still and that is, what's the point of this? It's gonna roll away. So I'm going to take it over to the disc sander or the belt sander. I'm going to place it up on end just like that. I'm going to check our belt for square. And as soon as I know that it's square, I am going to sand off one flat chamfer here on the bottom so that our bug sits nice and still just like that. And I think now the only thing left is to give it a little bit of a sanding here on these edges where it burred a little bit with the uh, belt sander. We're going to give those edges a sand, just a light one. Give this a coating of Danish oil to finish off the project. Maybe a couple little rubber feet on there and then uh, brush the dust off it. And I think we can call this one done. And there you have it. <laughs> what to do with your dead cicada bugs. Guys, uh, this project is just basically a silly one. Um, I found this bug and I was looking for a way to preserve it. And I don't know, I think it came out really cool. I really like the way this came out. Between the turnings on the side and the uh, resin uh, kind of the way the cylinder really magnifies the features of this bug are just incredible. The fact that his butt blew off, well, you know what, it wasn't the effect I was going for, but I have to admit, it does look kind of neat. So, was it what I was planning? Not in the slightest, but it did turn out pretty different. Um, now the resin, I will say this much, is that my resin is getting old, if not right up to the point of its expiry. And I had a little bit left in the bottom that I wanted to use. And because of that, I got this yellowish tinge. Um, one part of the epoxy is still clear. The other part actually yellowed. So um, no big deal. I ended up with this yellow tinge. I would have preferred it to be crystal clear and that way you would get a really good look at that cicada. But the yellowish kind of is a neat effect too, and it kind of gives it almost like that Jurassic Park. Remember in the movie Jurassic Park, they had the yellow uh, resin ember or whatever the heck it was, and it had the mosquitoes in it that carried the DNA. It's kind of this, that kind of a thing going on here. So I, I like it, I, I, I kind of dig it, I, I can handle that. Either way, it's just, I guess it's just a way to show you that you can use your imagination and basically make whatever you want. It doesn't have to have a purpose. It doesn't have to have a need. I think the whole point is that I got out here to the shop and honestly, I had a heck of a lot of fun with this, whether it be the anticipation of seeing how the cicada was going to come out in the resin, uh, whether it be the turning and the buffing of it and then the end caps and you know what the whole process is just fun and sometimes that's all you need out in the shop you just want to have some fun guys 
Uh, cicada bugs are, as I said earlier in the video, one of the ugliest bugs here in my region, but as well they are one of the coolest looking bugs. And I think I've done pretty well in preserving one here so that you can get a good look at it up close. Uh, I'm looking forward to when my granddaughter is old enough to be interested in stuff like that and she could look at this and turn it from all sides and really get a good look at what this cool looking bug is all about. If you haven't already guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe uh, even if dead cicadas are not your thing. Click that bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I've had a heck of a lot of a fun, a fun with this one. I, I hope you've had fun with it too, because, uh, I, like I said, that's, that's what it's all about sometimes, just having some fun. I hope you've enjoyed the show, guys. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're going to try this yourself with your own dead cicadas, and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another really weird Alternative Tuesdays.